People who speak about leadership uh, these days uh, sometimes say that the most powerful sign of leadership or, or tool of leadership in our time is convening. Um, and when uh, somebody, whoever had the first idea to convene a conversation about just peace, uh, someone that day uh, did a very powerful thing in convening a conversation. And 10 years later, here we are, mm -hmm. because somebody convened um, a conversation. I was uh, very struck by your comment that we don't want to uh, simply preserve the church that is, but create a stronger church uh, for the world. And in convening conversations, uh, it's important uh, that we, as we engage in conversation with one another, that we evoke an honesty in one another and that we lead with our own honest stories um, and that's a very difficult, uh, difficult thing to do. Several years ago, I was invited to, to talk at an, e at an event around which the topic was racial reconciliation. And I, I couldn't quite get going on what I was going to say. So I called our son who teaches civil rights history. And I, I said to him, uh, Jay, I've got this gig and I need a little help. <laughs> what would you say if you were me? You, know, you teach and work in this all the time. And he said, well, Mom, uh, it's really all about nice mama, bad neighbor. And I said, what? And he said, think about it. It's about nice mama, bad neighbor. And I still didn't get it. But then I did begin to get it. Uh, he said, when most people tell their stories, they had a nice mother, but then they had a bad neighbor down the road, a little bit distant from their home. And I thought about that a lot since. In the terms of the way we tell our stories, it's very, very difficult for us to honestly engage with one another in the places of our own difficulty, in the places of our own um, lack of pride and goodness. Uh, it's much easier to tell about the bad neighbor down the road uh, than someone within the, the closer circle of which I myself might then become more accountable um, and less heroic in the way that, uh, that I have engaged the world. And I know we have all been deeply touched by the kind of interaction that is very honest and, and names. After Hurricane Katrina uh, on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi, I, I heard many people when I would say, how are you? They would say, well, there was only four feet of water in my house. My neighbor was a lot worse. They had six feet of water. And I don't have to think about that conversation later. How could anybody say there was four feet of water in my house and that's not bad? But I think it's, it's sort of that dynamic we have of, of deflecting off our own pain because it's so hard to talk about and comparing somebody who, was, who had even more water. And in this uh, convening of conversations, uh, if, if we are to lead them well, uh, we have to look at the places where in our own journey we have come up against hard places and backed off, or come up against an opportunity and been unwilling uh, to, to speak the word that I needed to be, um, to be spoken. I circled back and called our, our son again later, working on that same <laughs> presentation. And he said, uh, I said, I asked him another question, a leading question, and he said, well, Mom, just tell them to tell their stories to each other. He said, that's all we need to do. Yeah. You know, ultimately, if we just get people to tell their stories to one another, uh, we'll make progress in this. Um, that's what Just Peace really is all about. It's circling up and, and telling, uh, telling <coughs> our stories to one another in a way that's honest uh, and true. In, um, in Mississippi, uh, as we've engaged conversations on race, one of our local pastors uh, convened a, con a conversation in his church, and one of the, the men of some age refused to be a part. He left the conversation and went out. And the pastor followed him to his car and had a long conversation with him, standing beside his car in the, in the parking lot. And the pastor tried to understand why he could not be present for that conversation. And finally, the man who had left the meeting, standing beside his car, looked at his pastor and he said, 
I cannot go back in that room because if I do, I'm admitting that my daddy is in hell. Those are his exact words. His exact words. And that pastor stayed with him out by the car. And the two of them eventually came back into the room. But that's how deep that conversation had to go and how long that pastor had to persevere uh, with this person who I confess I might have gotten a little impatient with and said, well, go ahead. We'll have a conversation. You go on home. But that's what it takes, that kind of uh, perseverance and honesty with, with one another. And when we're able to meet one another, to be convened in settings where there is strength, where there is safety, uh, where there is patience, where there is healing love, uh, we do know and believe that miraculous things continue to happen through a church that will be continually transformed. It will no longer be the church that was. We will not be preserving, trying to just make peace within the four walls of the church, but we'll be building a church that can be a credible witness in the world. Thank you.